Now, you got any bubble gum? Jawbreakers? Oh. I'll give you a jawbreaker. <laughs> Now you where you belong, garbage. I'll take an oatmeal cookie and a prune danish and all the money in the register. And give me all your fudge brownies, too. Here's all the dough you'll get, lawbreaker. <laughs> all lawbreakers must pay the price. And for the icing on the cake. Check this junk out! Hey, Melvin! Help me with this trampoline! No, I want this handsome six-piece croquet set. Hold it, sports fans. Why, you! Go ahead, make my night. Catch you on the slopes, punk. This guy's a psycho! You could use a little iron in your diet. Oh! Consider ah! yourself slam dunk, scuzzball. Ah! Casey Jones is gonna clean up this city. Who was that masked maniac? I don't know, but I hate him! wagon and hold on to your pizza. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Epic Tales from the Sewers, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles podcast. I have some very special returning guests today, the uh, team from Chromatic Phantom. We have Adam, Chaz, and Steve. How are you guys doing? Doing great. 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 Thanks for having us on. Yeah, thanks. uh, Thanks for coming back, and and thanks for uh, getting Steve to come back this time. Uh, Oh, my pleasure to be here. The full team. So we, we were just talking about uh, a, a lot of things that were a lot of fun. So I figured that we should start recording it. But um, so uh, you are working on the uh, film called Casey Jones Livewire. And uh, we talked about this back in 2020 in uh, October. And you guys were starting principal photography on it. I wanted to say in April. How did, uh, how did everything go? We actually um, shot in... February. February yeah. Oh, February. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, even a little earlier. Went great uh, though. Freezing cold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, cold you know, we uh, it, man, the, the amount of stories that we have from production, I, I think we could write a really entertaining book, to be honest. And it <laughs> and was congrats it was on doing fun. it during the polar vortex, too. So yeah, listen, it was <laughs> it was really nuts. And um we were very fortunate because we were able to get some really great film locations. So the the world we were able to build is so great and it lends itself so well to what you feel like Casey's world, the turtles world would look like. Mm-hmm. Uh, even though we filmed it here in Chicago, uh, we were really, really able to create something that, that just felt right, you know? And um, I'm saying all that because one of the locations that we filmed um, we were fortunate because uh, I had done I had done a Lifetime movie a few years back, and <laughs> so I had stayed in touch with uh, the man who owned the this this big studio compound. His name is Ari, and uh, that that film company is called Atomic Imaging Studios, and they're they're located here in Chicago, and they they had this awesome side building in the back that was it was kind of run down and we had they used it for film for a lot of different uh film locations and some storage because it was this big um god almost like well, how would you guys house. describe it yeah ice house it was like an ice <laughs> uh an ice manufacturing building um from turn of the century i think right yeah so it was oh, really wow. cool and they we that's where we were able to stage Casey's apartment and 
it was perfect, you know? And he was so great and so helpful. And about two weeks out from filming, I get a call from him and he says, so listen, the, the HVAC is not working. I've had a guy come out multiple times. The, the, heat, the heat is not going to be on. But we were too deep in. We had people flying in to film this thing. And a, a, a bit, uh, you know, a, I mean, a small crew, but, but a big crew still. You know, I mean, we had probably had, what, like a dozen people, I think. And, yeah. Yeah. And so we're like, okay, well, I, I guess we're going to film in a building that has no heat. And if anyone doesn't live in Chicago, <laughs> and, and can you can you explain that to some of the the un, the non Chicago listeners? February. <laughs> I'm gonna have our fellow West Chicagoan. What do you? Think? Yeah. How would you describe it? So I I moved out uh, to this area from Connecticut in, in the uh, you know Northeast, and I had no idea because you get snow there and it gets cold and wet and all that. But um, there is this wind that cuts right through you. And yeah. it's, it's a dry wind that literally will just blow right through you. And um, in February, it is about at its peak. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was just so cold and everyone was just doing their best to hold it together. We bought all these heaters. Those little, 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 you little space about, heaters. <laughs> yeah, dude, if you were about five inches in front of them, you were all right. But once you pass that, you, they didn't do anything. Did stuff start freezing on set then? Uh, yeah, I mean, there was, you could see there was ice forming on uh, some of the metal. Well, and during we the- actually had a, I remember it, it was right at the end. And I'm so glad that we had filmed all the scenes in that spot when we did. But I remember a pipe burst because we got frozen over and it started flooding in a section of the, <laughs> of yeah. the set. And we were like, oh God. <laughs> yeah, I remember we got, we got a call from, I think our, our director of photography and, you know, he's like, there is a water leaking now. I'm like, oh, wow, is it yeah. loud? He's like, yeah. Can you hear it? We're like, oh, that's the sound. So thank God we, we were done filming what we needed to film. Uh, I think everything we needed to do was action based. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not sure if sound mattered as much uh, or no, it was, a, I think it was a, the workout thing. Um, yeah. But, you know, it was either way, we, we were past, past, either way, we were past where we needed to be um, yeah. for dialogue. I was, you know, so it's dropping now here in Chicago. It's getting pretty cold. It was, I think it was a below 20 degrees yesterday. Yeah. It's about 16 oh. to 11. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I walked outside my house and I went, Oh, this is how cold it was. when we filmed Casey <laughs> and I was in a tank top. And I'm for, is currently uh, 57 degrees. What's that? <laughs> I said Las Vegas is currently 57 degrees. Yeah. That's awesome. So um our uh yeah, and our our April O'Neill, who is played by my uh my very awesome and lovely fiance, Kaylee. Kaylee, soon to be Michaels, but Kaylee Libby right now. She was, I mean, she was in like leggings and a sports bra. She did get to wear a leather jacket for that fight scene though. So yeah. I'm glad we built that into the into that <laughs> wardrobe. <laughs> it also is so cool looking. Yes. Yeah. That's a Maybe cool aesthetic. And, and I mean, April wears that a lot. And I mean, even if you go to like the Turtles comics, the Turtles yes. Adventures, like when, when you get later into that, like 1993, and where April is going to Japan and stuff, she is wearing the leather jacket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot of it was based off of that. And, you know, when Shaz and I first started hanging out, which was, Chess, how long ago was that? Over a decade ago. It was, it's been a long time. Oh so about a decade ago. But I remember we, you know, we, we both, we loved movies and we always wanted to create stuff. And one of the persons we talked about were like, man, I lo- we, we both love Streets of Rage. And so there are, I think there's some inspiration and love letters to Streets of Rage that we were able to implement to some of the oh, definitely. wardrobe. Oh, like Blaze and um, oh yeah, Axel yes, and exactly. Basically, that's basically Casey and, and April in this film. <laughs> that's awesome. I just played the fourth one. I think um, on PlayStation that was pretty fun. Was, oh pretty yeah, cool. I remember when I bought that and I said, "Jazz, yeah, dude, I just got Streets of Rage 4. and he's like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I already beat it." <laughs> <laughs> that's that awesome. Was a, that was an instant buy. That's good. Um, so. It, it was cold, everything that, um, 
the fight sequences, I, I imagine that's got to be difficult because I know like even just playing softball or something in, in like the fall, you know, your hands seem to vibrate. I can't imagine like, you know, uh, the clank of like weapons on weapons in the cold like that. That must have been brutal. Well, I'll say I think the villains of the of the movie had it the best because they oh, were yeah. the most. Uh, I think they were. Up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the villains were fine in this thing. They were they were plenty of wardrobe for them. But yeah, Casey on the April of the hand, uh, it's a yeah. it, it, it was less about what they're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good muscle. Was, um, so. it, the fighting was, I will say, I, I think I'll never know until it actually happens. Well, I'll never know, period. But I do think I would mm, I would love to film fight scenes in a springtime. I guess I'll say that. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to be filming it in the in the middle of summer. So I guess that was one of the shining things. What it was nice to keep your heart rate up and keep moving, but honestly, it was it was so cold at some moments. We were we were filming so hard and going at it uh, so diligently for so many days that yeah. it would hit points where even even though I was like being so so active and and doing these fight scenes over and over again, I'm like my body's just not warming up, um, and we were changing. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, little little uh, film trick here. We had our we had our our very real weapons, and then uh, we had identical weapons that were meant for hitting people. Oh, cool! Uh, which is awesome because they look so good. And again, having the team together to help build this stuff out and have it look so seamless. But so luckily, when a lot of that stuff is happening, there's not a lot of that. Yeah, that baseball bat like clang you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that vibrate but i you know it would be rough it would be rough i do know i do remember there was a time where i think you you made full knuckle connection to a, a very hard uh i think mask or, or of some sort and i'm pretty sure that you're oh uh yeah i punched someone's mask i remember there was there was a like a mask to to knuckle connection that was me yeah that was me i got i did so there we go i got hit a handful of times um our i don't look like he got an actual fight by the end of production which was great for the film because he just <laughs> that's cool, awesome yeah. really nice like battle-worn look as the film goes on and it's all authentic yeah it's if you cool. see if you see some scrapes and cuts on my my part of my exposed like back and side that's real i don't know i don't know if we if it actually picked it up but that that's real um and our our lead choreographer and uh, one of our can we call him one of our our bad guys is that cool is that oh, kai that's kai yep. kai kai oh Lee. yeah um tell him what he is a ninja yeah <laughs> he's so he's so awesome uh and you know and and honestly so I, I definitely got hit a few times from kai and thank god i was wearing the casey mask uh of course it was with the the time i got he just got this awesome kick in on me and it was right to the side of the face <laughs> got the mask off across oh. the room um and i think i would have been totally it, it hurt it hurt bad because I, that was one of the we had a few different masks we were using throughout production um for reasons i will not say because we do some fun stuff with it but that mask was a quick change out mm-hmm. and uh we hadn't padded that the mask out yet on the inside and so it was just like the hard material so when he when he kicked me it was just that just right against my face. I didn't um, even think of that, of the idea of having pads. So as, as creators of this, right. And you're thinking of how to practically bring a character like Casey Jones together. Does Casey have pad on the inside of that? Cause in the comic, he doesn't seem to. No, I, I think, think after he gets cracked in the face a couple times, he learns uh, to put uh, some in there. I would think that, yeah, if you were really going to do that, you'd want it padded. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like a like a catcher's mask, at least, where it, it kind of oh, hits the absolutely. outside and. For sure. that, and that's re- honestly that's what we ended up using was uh, like a catcher and baseball padding uh, for the inside because yeah, I mean that 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 hard material, you know, if it gets hit, it's just yeah. I mean, <laughs> just right against your face. Well, and, and, and I and when I when I talk about Kai. Um, you know, that guy is so awesome and so professional and, you know, accidents happen on set and luckily everyone was safe. And it was just, you know, I was the only one I think that got, uh, they got hit the handful <laughs> of times. And a lot of that's because these guys are fighting in, in some of the most obstructed masks. 
Oh yeah. I mean, you hear stories of how those guys back in, you know, the original films were moving around in those suits. And I mean, it's crazy when you really get on set and you've got something that's kind of just blinding you and you're supposed to flip around and twirl and your legs are moving around. It's a, it's a <laughs> whole thing. So I follow yeah. uh, Mark Queso a lot and I know he was uh, really huge on uh, gymnastics and he played both Leonardo in the first film and uh, one of the, one of the, uh, the ninjas like doing some stuff. So yeah, yeah I can, I can only that. imagine that's gotta be really challenging. I, I, I think at some point it becomes kind of just like muscle memory and you're less relying on like your visuals and you're just like, <laughs> I think this is where I'm supposed to go <laughs> with my next. <laughs> yeah. So. There's a, we rehearsed the fights a lot. Um, we, we spent a long time. Um, uh, I, I also was part of choreography along with that. I, I mean, everyone was a really, really awesome component in making these fights look so great because that was one thing we, we wanted there to be. Um, I, we wanted there to be these really, these really awesome moments that you'd remember and wanted them to feel simple and feel like it's something that Casey would be doing or that would happen in the moment. But we spent a long time to try to make something that felt a little fresh, but, but also grounded. And um, uh, so, yeah, the, the muscle memory, like Chaz said, that's what a lot of it came down to. You know, you still, you still slip up. I, there was a moment toward um, the end of the long film, the film day where we were, were in the ice house filming uh, that long fight. And I just, I kept forgetting um, a move that I was supposed to do. And it just set me up for a kick right to the back. And, uh, it, <laughs> and it was heavy enough for sure. So I think I still messed it up after that too, but. <laughs> You're like, all right, we're just going to go with that take. So. <laughs> yeah, it, actually, you know what? I think that is a take it's in there. So, you know, I get kicked in the back and that is legitimately me getting rocked right in the back. So I think that's the one we, we do have. Oh, wow. Well, uh, that's, that's great. You suffer for your art. So <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you for that, Adam. So <laughs> that, that whole process though, of filming this was like, it was, it was intense, but also like, it was so much fun. Cause it was very um, like reality TV show style where it's like, it was all of us living together for essentially a week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got a, a big Airbnb and cast and crew essentially lived together because we just did not have time to like go to set and then like individually run home and do our different places because we were just on such a tight schedule. Yeah. So filming for a week nonstop, we essentially just, we all lived together for, for a week. So we would go to film set, uh, work on the film for, you know, sometimes it was like 18 hour days and <laughs> It was wow. really nuts. And then we would just go back home, pass out, and then go back to set the next day. And yeah. um, it was a it was a wild experience, but it, like looking back at it, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change that. It was a lot of fun to do. I mean, I Did, might I might you might change add an extra day in there. So we I would add an extra day experience. only until three in the morning. But the, the, exp <laughs> the experience though of like there's not a lot of times where yeah. you literally are like you're just living with your crew for a week. That's like, that to me, that was a lot of fun. Cause we were just like, we'd go home. And then the nights that we did have a little bit more time, we'd talk about the day and, you know, basically had like daily huddle meetings at the end of the night. We'd talk like what worked, what didn't work. And you go back and fix anything. Um, and so that helped with how the speed of how much we were doing. Um, Cause we were able to honestly film a lot in just a week's span of time. Cause it is about a, it's about a 23 minute give or take, um, yeah. you know, like, a, essentially a pilot episode is what, we're, you know, we're kind of sharing it as, but you know, yeah. it's a pretty, and pretty lengthy piece of it's film. way longer than we thought it was going to be, which is so exciting. Yeah. Uh, 20, you, you hit me with 23 minutes there. I'm like, I thought it was going to be 15. No, so. no, we, we, um, after that first, uh, tear break, I think. Right. Yeah. Well, a lot yeah. of it came down yeah. to, we, we were looking at the script and, you know, we realized we're like, you know, we don't really have a third act. I mean, we have this thing that, that does exist within and we're like, you know, you look at it now and you're like, oh, sh how would how would this thing have been what it was? Had we not had something like this, you know? Uh, so, you know, it's, and that's just we, we're all talking. I mean, God, the amount of conversations and phone calls and powwows we had on this and went back and forth. And um, it's amazing, like when you think you've you squeezed all the blood out of the rock you're like oh, okay. <laughs> there's 
there's more. And I, I got to go back to the week of filming and these long days. And we're, you're going to hear this a lot from us for a long time, but the crew that we had was Stellar. so amazing. I would not have, I'm honestly, I don't know how we lucked out. I don't know how these people are like, there's, there was one night they were just like, we're going to sleep here because there was like a green room within the offices of the, um, of the studio. I'm like, we're going to sleep here because it all, we, we got to be up. And, you know, they were just fighting through so much. And, and I, uh, I have a lot of love for these people. I really do. They're, and they're wonderful people. Um, yeah. I'm incredibly less. thankful for, for yes. the hard work that our crew did. Yeah. It's a small, small, but mighty crew. Cause everyone, when, you know, when you finally see the credits roll for this thing, um, not a single person did one thing. Everyone was wearing multiple hats and just doing whatever they had to do to, to help make this thing happen. So yeah, yeah everybody was hefting lights and moving props and setting things up. Everybody. Probably just stay warm, I bet. Yeah, well, <laughs> it just had to get done. I mean, you got yeah. I mean, us. I mean, it doesn't matter if you were, if you were, uh, you know, in charge of um, Boom, if you were one of the actors, like you were grabbing what you needed to grab and moving it along. You know, I mean, honestly, if there's any filmmakers out there listening and you're and you're like wanting to make stuff or you're looking for people, you can ask us who is on our team. I can't promise we'll want to share them with you. But <laughs> those are the people you're going to want because they're incredible. Do you guys have uh, any plans on showing these in a theater or anything like that? Is it going to be a premiere? So we we have talked about that. Um, it's a little. Uh, uncertain at the moment on the details of how that all might release but i think ideally um right before maybe everything goes out we'd like to do a little premiere in chicago we talked about cool. um uh, get you know rent out a theater for the weekend and uh try try and bring some people on let them know hey if you want to see live wire on the big screen um we're going to do it for a couple of days um yeah and i and think then, we'll have sorry Chaz, i think oh I'll yeah no that. and then just you know after that we'll send it out to to all the fans that backed it of course but just to have a you know if you do want to experience it you know on the big screen i think we do want to try and make that happen mm -hmm. yeah we um uh there's a <clears throat> there's a theater in particular that we have our eye on um it's it's local here in chicago it's a it's a really awesome little uh, local theater um that that I go to all the time and I won't say what it is yet. Just, well, I guess I could, it's called Davis theater, which we really are a fan of. There's a lot of really, really wonderful theaters out in Chicago. Um, Music box, Davis theater, the Logan theater. Davis is really close to, to um, a, a really accessible part. Um, and uh, I go there a lot. They've, they've always been very supportive and we know we want to have like a little premiere for, for us and, and cast and crew and family we would love to extend it to be public and you know that's where uh fans come in you know if you're listening to this and you know we we um and you want to be a part like you want to come to a premiere and you would you would love to help support that and you know help help you know get a ticket and be a part of something like that that's that's how this stuff grows you know there's only so much that we can do we would love to be able to just rent this thing out and show it for a weekend. Um, but realistically, I think that might come down to uh, launching a pre-sale and seeing if it's realistic, you know? So if you are listening, you want to be part of it, um, support and spread the word. And, and we would love to have you there. That's awesome. Yeah. And I mean, um, I, I know you guys did the Indiegogo. I didn't get to participate in the Indiegogo after the Kickstarter and all that, but um, I, I saw you almost, it, it looked like you almost doubled your, your Kickstarter number, number that you were looking for. Um, but what about Indiegogo? How did that do? So Indiegogo, I think we initially were, I think we set a goal of, a, I think it was like $5,000. Five, five grand. Yeah. And we, I think we ended up with like seven, seven or eight. So the, Indi the Indiegogo was nice because it was something that we, we wanted to put in place, one, for all of the – we had a lot of ideas in the Kickstarter that we were like, <laughs> listen, guys, we've already got so many types of, like, merch that we're trying to make for this. Let's save that and see if we can come back to it. So then um, after shooting the film, we were like, okay, well, let's – I think a post, a post run to try and, and, and help with that a little bit. 
we really do us good. And we can also, all those ideas that we had sitting on the shelf, let's bring those out. So that's where we brought out the idea of like the Casey Jones bust, um, skateboard, skateboard. Um, some additional t-shirts, uh, a couple other things. Let's like, let's throw all that in there. Um, and, um, and at the Indiegogo ended up being successful, which was awesome. And um, that, that just helped with, with post, which is where we're at right now. Just uh, all the bells and whistles of the film, working on visual effects and uh, score and music and, and all the stuff that makes the film what it is. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're, we're not uh, using, what is it called? What is it called? The, the free music? Uh, oh yeah royalty free you know we're, yeah. we're 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 writing everything all, everything is original original we yep. wanted to make an experience and you know what i mean i think steve is uh steve and chaz and i we all are that was our part of our childhood it wasn't just the film it was you know while we don't have a lunchbox it was the lunchbox yeah you know, the, the t-shirt the cassette tape um the soundtrack all all this stuff um uh it was it was an experience you know you got to like you got to watch the movie and then uh wrap yourself up in the sheets guys we should make sheets oh that would be fun <laughs> just casey jones mask top to bottom adam i don't have time to only in a, only in, <laughs> only in a twin size though it, oh no twin. Yeah. twin xl though so yeah. you can have it in your dorm so yeah uh, what, what making... adam's saying though is so so relevant too because if any of you were, were around in the summer of 1989 when batman came out that's the hysteria oh. that took that took everything <laughs> you know it's like you have the breakfast cereal you have the the you know, uh, crayons were Batman crayons. It's like literally everything. So it was just like lunchbox sheets. Everything it was crazy. Yeah. And, so, <laughs> yep, yeah, we, so yeah, we wanted to. That, that's a, a whole thing. You know, we if we could, if we can get this thing showing in a theater and people are willing to, you know, purchase a ticket and be a part of that. Uh, we grew up in that era. You know, where I, I remember specifically watching Batman Returns. And going out in the lobby and our parents picking up the graphic novel. And I remember they had like cups and all this merch there. So, I mean, the, the idea that we can have this thing there and come out in the lobby afterward and pick up some merch and, it, it, you know, man, comments, yeah. if only Steve, we had and, one of those. And Steve is like the mastermind behind a lot yeah. of merch. <laughs> like the yes, stuff, I mean, he is uh, a graphic designer by day and so much more at night because he is just cranking out all kinds of stuff for Casey Jones. Um, I know one of the one of the rewards we had was the comic book. I have a copy of it here and it is just 32 pages of oh, wow. so much awesomeness happening and there's just so much love that he put in. Oh my it. God, look at your, your staging too. That's fantastic. So, and this is all... Yeah. Um, based on the film so you know it kind of like you're talking like with batman and some of the other movies that they've done um you know you've got a a nice loose adaptation that is kind of a, a reimagining of of how things played out but um but yeah the, the merch is it, it's just so much fun to work on for this thing <laughs> yeah i was just thinking about that today because i saw someone in in our uh, facebook group epic shells posted a uh, ninja turtles cassette uh, soundtrack from the first uh, movie. And I was like, "Oh my god, that thing is in great shape." You know? That's awesome. <laughs> like, who has cassettes anymore? I'm like, that's so great. So, Casey Jones, Livewire, does that, that, exactly. Yep. Yeah, I believe that be, is in my my Livewire tier. You'll be getting one. <laughs> yep. Steve, yeah, no, was I was so excited. <laughs> when whether whether you were finished with it and it was like there in front of you, or you saw like a mock up of it online, well, production wise. What's been your favorite thing or things that you've seen after it's been completed? Oh, I mean, having the comic done is a huge, a huge deal for me. It's like the first full length comic that I've done. Um, Which is amazing because you would think that he's been and, doing this thing for <laughs> ever. Um, the guy also works. Yeah. <laughs> How do you do it? Uh, just keep doing it <laughs> i don't know anything else besides the comic that you were like oh, um, this is awesome i i mean i love i love all the pins mm -hmm. um 
I definitely, I loved seeing the skateboard because that was just kind of a goof that I did. Um, I was like, hey, I'm going to do a, a riff on Dark Knight. Dark Knight, yeah. Um, with Casey. And then we wound up using it for the skateboard deck. Which a limited, I mean, it was a very small group of people that got those skateboards, but I am so damn jealous of them. Like, <laughs> so you, I, you uh, didn't get any for yourself? <laughs> we'll, we'll probably order some after. Maybe, maybe it's after it's all said and done. Yeah. But yeah, not, not at the moment, but man, those, those skateboards turned out sweet. I need to make sure I have one of those in my collection as well. I, I can't imagine at my age getting on a skateboard. So oh. <laughs> See, that's the thing is you just, you get the, you get the skateboard deck and you just, you yeah, just hang it up. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I mean, there's I, other more turtles in a skateboard. Like, oh yeah. Know, listen, I'll go and I'll, I'll get on film set and I'll, I'll fight people and well, fight people, quote unquote, and take tumbles and get tossed. I won't get on a skateboard. That's crazy. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the sequel, I, if we tell you, you have to learn how to skateboard and kickflip. Oh my God. No, <laughs> I'll just be on it. And then you'll, you'll cut to someone else doing it. <laughs> oh my God. I, I, I was just thinking how scary that is. I'm like, I've literally done professional wrestling and I don't want to get on a skateboard. That's what's scary. <laughs> oh my God. Really? That's awesome, dude. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. It hurts. Can I yeah. tell you a little, a little like um, a dream of mine? Please do. Is, is that Casey <laughs> blows up and then I get to do an appearance on like one of the one of the matches as Casey. Oh geez. Um, well, uh, what, what's his face from Arrow did that? Like he was doing it from Arrow, but um, he played Casey, right? Oh, he did. He did. yeah. That would be pretty wild. He's it, from what, what I understand. Uh, who is it? Stephen Amell, right? That's, That's the, yeah, the other yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he did that. That uh, I think he also did American Ninja Warrior too, and like beat it. So I don't know. He's really? like a freak. Right. Yeah, he's nuts. So Dang. all right. Those guys are getting crazy. I'll have him. I'll yeah. have him do the kickflip on the next Casey Jones show. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to see that. That'd be great. So it, it's funny. I, I I swear you must have been reading off my questions. That was literally the next question I had was about the merch. I'm oh, I'm yeah. super envious because the the one thing that I have my dream is that I want to write a turtle comic. So I I have an idea in mind too, and it's it's kind of a twist on um if if you've ever read Batman Gotham by by Gaslight. Yep. So it's kind of like a twist on that with turtles. So that's uh, that'll be something. That's awesome. I can see that. Well, hit Steve up. He might be able to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, honestly. I believe I will. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I would love to do, and I think I think Steve and I shared this, but I, um, you know, we're, we're both, Steve and I are both artists, and I, I'll, I'll sometimes call him just to be like, just to ask him about art stuff and just talk. We nerd out, talk about artists and stuff, you know. But uh, I would love to do a turtles cover. It'd be great. That'd be that would be awesome. I know a and guy. It, so it's realistic to be able to do. I think it, it is. Uh, like I said, I, I know a guy. I know a guy who uh, actually a couple episodes ago uh, is uh, you know um, contacting artists about doing uh, covers. So I'll uh, I'll see if I can get a uh, contact for you. Holy cow! Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. What, what was I going to ask? I was just I just had something in my mind. I was going to ask you about. Oh. Um, Masters of the Universe Revelation. We didn't get a chance to talk about that. Adam, I know you're a huge Masters of the Universe fan. Not exactly Casey Jones related, but um, what what'd you think? Did you get a chance to watch us? You know, I actually have not watched it. Um, oh, wow. I am a huge Motu fan as well. Yeah. <clears throat> and a lot of that's because um, if, if anyone here has any idea about like my life or follows me or whatever, I've just been so busy. The, the, the idea of sitting down and watching a show, I, I really haven't. I'm so behind on so much content and I'm a nerd. I'm an uber nerd. Uh, so I have yet to, I mean, I, I, have, I definitely own some of the toys, which maybe, <laughs> maybe is a little sacrilegious, but um, I have yet to sit down and watch, uh, watch it. So I, I don't have, I've only heard things. I can't say I'm, um, I, I need experience it for myself, you know? Well, I, for the record, I loved it. So I, okay. I'm just okay. saying. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. Have, that, you have it? you seen it? I haven't watched the second part yet. So the first part, I actually threw a Revelations party at my house. Oh, Jazz wow. Wow. I went bomb parties. You ever want to see a nerd party? Follow my Instagram. I do it right. <laughs> <laughs> Did it you was, ever do it? Was a crazy hey, party. Go to yeah. Jazz's house and be a part of it. <laughs> 
Yeah, no, the, the first half I threw a big party. My buddy made like cookie, like, like he made and Skeletor cookies. I put all my figures in the living room. Nice. Um, my now wife was very hesitant about it, but, <laughs> but we She's like, we, I don't like the look of this. Who is that? Tila? Uh, now, why is this? Why is this wizard <laughs> ghost thing on the wall yeah. over here? Eva now, Lynn, what the heck kind of name? Yeah. <laughs> Chaz, Chaz, I have a question for you. Well, all of you, and there is a right answer to this. <laughs> oh no, you can't pick Skeletor. Who's your next favorite character? Orko. That was mm. not the right answer, Steve. <laughs> Chaz, That's not the right answer. <laughs> I mean, Scareglow is... There it is! Yeah, there it is, baby! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the right, I mean, Manny Faces? I mean, come on. Name. What's that? <laughs> I, I yeah. always grew up enjoying the comic relief characters, so that's... Yeah. <laughs> My Here's the thing. What is now? Spout. Is, yeah. a skeleton, a skeleton <laughs> character in whatever property you're working on. Oh, yeah. It's, it's kind of like a get out of jail card. Who, so. who was it? There was either an artist or a toy maker or somebody I saw years ago. I, I think it was on a show, but he was like, yeah, it was like the 90s talking about toys or comics. And he said, when in doubt, if you just want, if you just want little boys to like it, skulls and spikes. <laughs> it's true. That, that sounds like the toys that made us, maybe. Did you watch that? I wonder if that's what it is. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah, I love it. I actually, I released a, um, I'm thinking I, I might do a second run of it. But I created a um, an adult uh, He-Man coloring book. I don't know oh, I own one. Yeah, you own yeah, one. I, I do. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. I thought you did. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just I wanted to. It's funny because Revelations kind of it's, it seems very similar. But when I did it a few years back, I wanted to have the characters look like how they felt to me as a kid. So I kept all their uh, their action figure aesthetic the same and just just redrew it in a way that it felt to me which revelation seems to be very similar to that they, they're pretty on spot with um with their outfitting right they're um i mean they're pretty close i i would say and and it's like there's some cool redesigns like beast yeah. man is fierce so Beast Man's pretty cool. it, like yeah, absolutely like fierce redesign stuff that they did who's yeah, the most worthless motu character uh, also Orko. Uh, <laughs> King Randor. <laughs> Orko. Right, Steve, that was good. That was good. <laughs> I, I never had much use for King Randor, so uh, oh, yeah. I, I would throw him out there in um yeah. second Mechanek, you know. Um, oh I loved Mechanek as a kid. I, the toy was cool, but like if like you're broke. asking <laughs> here, like here, I'll make my neck really tall to look at this. But wait, we have Stratos who can fly, and we have Buzz Off who could fly. Oh, okay, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'll look a little taller. Yeah, <laughs> now I can ride this ride. Wow. Yeah, that's... <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep that that that's it. Oh, so, so, do you think that there would be a possibility in the future down the road? You're you're done with Live Wire, then you're looking at a Masters of the Universe film. Maybe for like a sophomore follow up. Oh man, that's a big that's a big one to like anything that's like super that's fantasy. Poll. It is yeah. Is like well, it is a whole nother realm. And the thing with with Motu is you, you have fantasy and sci fi mixed together. Um, that's so why it's so awesome. Big, so. Yeah, <laughs> which is, like, one of the, which is it really why it's is. awesome. But it, like production. <laughs> Production wise, that's a huge lift. Well, and that's, I mean, you know, talking about Casey Jones too, it, we tried to keep everything grounded and not to bite off more than we could chew when it came to the film. Yeah. Because, I yeah. mean, look, you can look back at that, at those early 90s movies with the suits and they, they did them great. Like there was a huge team behind it. I mean, you're talking about Jim Henson Studios. Like, yeah. To make that work, you had to have that kind of crew and people in place. And so we knew from the get-go, hey, we're a small team. We're trying to do something that even though it's on a smaller scale, we don't want people to look at it and be like, oh, God, like, like what were they trying to do? Like, yeah. we yeah. wanted to make the money go as far as it could and never to pull anyone out of reality and be like – you know, like, oh, look at that guy's goofy looking suit. Like, yeah, yeah, I get you. Yeah. 
Because yeah. then, then you're looking at like Turtles: The Next Mutation, which it's like mm-hmm. parts of it could look alright, but then it's like, oh, why is Raph on that motorcycle again? So, yeah, and I mean, if you got yeah. a TV show with a consistent incoming budget that's having a hard time, you can only imagine what a couple of indie filmmakers are going to oh, yeah. do with that. So it's like, <laughs> uh, let's let's uh, let's do what we can, but let's stay away from trying to go full blown turtle because. Mm-hmm. Um, that's yeah. that's for another day like yeah. that's yeah hollywood. that's for a day when we have real hollywood money to play with mm-hmm. and that was the thing is you know i i uh we we talk about this all the time where we wonder if people are gonna be like oh, i wonder if the turtles are gonna show up and um you know we can we can say transparently um that visually you know you're not gonna see any of the four and like jess that just came down to we wanted to whatever we put out, we wanted the respect that we were making and not put up more than we can chew. We want people to watch it, not be like, oh, that doesn't look good. Because what's the point? Of, you know, what's the point? You got to stay in your wheelhouse, in other words, you know? Yeah. If you're not special yeah. effects guys, you know, it's like you're not going to wow someone with your special effects. Exactly. And it also really became a really fun, um, I mean, that's not the right word. It was, uh, it was an awesome venture to go into as as creators and filmmakers and turtle fans to create something that was like you watch it and even though you're not this is not it's it's case jones it's called casey jones not calling the turtles but you still watch and you're like this is turtles this just Mm -hmm. feels like turtles yeah so so who do you who do you guys hope sees this film like if you could say i hope that one person gets to watch this who's that going to be Someone who's in charge of programming at Paramount Plus. <laughs> I think no, that would be a great, like Nickelodeon. That's that's your yeah, uh, yeah which yeah. I think Paramount um, Plus owns uh, or Paramount owns Nickelodeon. Right? Somebody yeah. at, at Viacom. Viacom it Paramount. is. Yeah. Uh, what I would love, and this is a huge ask, and I don't even know if it's realistic, and I'm sure it's what every filmmaker would love, but I would love someone like Chaz and Steve said over at one of those major companies to watch it, but also that there was that spot in their heart and they went, this can be big. I can make money off of this because that's what the bottom line is for these big companies. But also I, I want my, I want, I, this is, I want my, my childhood, my, mysto- my nostalgia to, to live here. And you know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, Cause that's the thing you see these, we are all nerds here and everyone listening, I'm sure is a nerd and, I think it's very common to see that thing come to the big screen or come to your TV screen. And you're like, wait, why did you change this? Why did you do that? You're yeah. not a fan. I can smell right through that. You're not a fan of that. So that's what I, so if I could have it, my biggest dream is that someone with the power to make it happen, makes it happens, but they, they allow it to be what it is. And yeah. Cause I, th- I think the way that we try to approach live wire too was, it's very much uh, a film for for our age, people who grew up with the original Ninja Turtles, but it's also done in a way where I feel like if you do have a kid, you're you're gonna want to show this to them. And tonally, it is acceptable. Like this isn't an R-rated Casey Jones, but it's also not a fluffy Casey Jones. Yeah. So it it kind of hits a nice spot where it's familiar with the the eighties and the nineties, but at the same time you can bring, you know, a younger generation in. And I think that they're going to really appreciate it. I think Casey has that soft edge to him as well. You don't really see him swear or use foul language. Like you see him say like hose brain or something, you know, in, in the films, (laughs) you know, or, or like broadzilla was that like the worst thing he says in there? Yeah. He's a lovable idiot. He, he is. He's he's affable and he's not, you know, he's not an R-rated superhero like a Deadpool or anything. He's right. he's a PG vigilante, you know, so. <laughs> and I know that the, the Turtles originally was, you know, we all know it was a lot more intense than what we ended up getting on the big screen. Um, and I think when we first talked about it, one of my buddies reached out like, oh, man, I can't wait to see this. It's going to be so brutal. And we were like, well, that's not actually not what we're doing. Like, it, <laughs> make, make no mistake, it's kick ass. It like, yeah, we, it's kick ass. But we don't have to lean on, oh, it's brutal and violent and bloody, uh, because we were because we we had a great team and we know we were able to actually make something that that 
is fun and kick ass. You know, like some of these places to lean on. There's some of these some people or some creators. Um, and um, and I'm saying this is a nerd. I'm not saying this is a critical uh, peer in the industry. I'm saying this is a nerd. Where it's like, ah, you were skating by because you just dump blood on it, and that doesn't always work. <laughs> And in this case, it, it doesn't, when I, when I get people that ask me what it's like, um, and I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts on this as well, what, what you tell people, because I always tell people, well, it's, the vibe is the 1990s Turtles film meets Cobra Kai. You know, it's, it's Turtles, it's, it's, it's super kick-ass, but it, it's a feel good as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's all about fun. Exactly. That, I think that to me, because of course, like when we started this project, we did the, the YouTube search and a little bit of a deep dive and we're like, we want to not make something that's already been made. That was like the first thing that we, we yeah. knew for a fact. Um, and so we, we looked online, seeing what people had been doing. We went back and watched the original movies and we took, we, we honestly tried to take the best of the things that we liked, but then try to do something completely different. Mm-hmm. and the things that we liked was the the fun lightheartedness goofiness and you know uh sometimes airhead moments of casey and the things that we didn't like were the super brutal sometimes like uh borderline killing people consistently um you know like overly you know uh language all that kind of stuff it was like that's a little bit too much and so just trying to find that middle ground was like numero uno i think for us initially yeah you said it jazz you you know this is this this casey jones live wire is for people who grew up in the 80s and 90s and loved turtles and love it today and also they got a kid now you know and that kid's 10 years old it's for that dad and he can watch it with his 10 year old son or daughter yep that's awesome. Um, we, we didn't get to talk much about April, I think, just uh, on this. Um, what, what can we expect from like the character of April? Um, is she uh, is she like a re- reformed news person? Um, is she a scientist? Like which which direction is this one taking April in? Oh, you can't tell. So can. just, okay, uh, He's smiling. So everything, we can tell you. So everything we just okay. talked about um, staying away from violence, we encouraged with April. Oh, OK. Uh, <laughs> April in this, that I think that was the biggest 180 alt that we kind of did with this is that I think, if anything, we've seen April a lot kind of take On the, the shadows. Way. She's literally been in the shadows and been behind the scenes, not getting her hands dirty. Mm-hmm. And um, that was not going to be the case with this. Mm-hmm. We needed, we needed a, we needed a tag team situation. And um yeah. And April was the obvious choice, uh, you know, April and Casey. So she yeah. had to get her hands dirty and we, we build it up in a really fun way in this. Yeah. I, I think April is really, she's, she's Casey's emotional springboard. And then also his, his physical springboard, I guess, during the fights. For kicks. Yeah. Quite <laughs> yeah. In some ways. yeah. Uh, well, it's, you know, again, you talk about what we grew up with. We're, we grew up in a time where uh, we got to see the dawning of some of the most badass women in film. You know, you have Ripley, you have Sarah Connor, and I know that those are repeated a lot. But there's a reason why it's because they were just super kick-ass characters that were so genuinely made in a film. And, you know, with April, that's, that's the one thing is when we see turtles, uh, films and and projects a lot of it always starts out in that just meeting the turtles i've just met the turtles it's always kind of right there at the beginning and this premise that we we decided we wanted to take place after they've known the turtles for a couple years and so with that being the case uh, we realized like well april is gonna learn this stuff from the turtles like she's gonna be involved in their interests She's, she's gonna see some crazy stuff and so naturally she's gonna have to get trained a little bit she's gonna take it upon herself she's such a um she's such a like a let's get it done character that it felt crazy like well if she if she's known the turtles for two or three years and they're constant and casey's dating casey 
why would she be be like, well, you guys take care. I, I, we all felt like she's going to start training. She's going to start learning. Um, so she's, she can handle some things with it for herself. And it's, and that was a big thing is like, how do we make that make, and make it genuine, you know, make this real for her and not just like, Hey, look, we made a strong girl because that's not fun and that's yeah. not genuine. And that's doesn't respect one, the character. And it doesn't respect Kaylee, uh, the actress. Who is great, by the way, and I'm about to call her in in a second. So what okay. Do you, what do you guys think so far before I get her in? That's awesome. Uh, yeah. Chad, I, I, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, it's very much. It's funny because like the title is Casey Jones Livewire, but I like to think somewhere in that yellow, that yellow color of Livewire is the true throughput of of April because. I mean, she is the energy of that, uh, especially the back half of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're not even really seeing, especially in the trailer that we, you know, a little teaser trailer we dropped. I mean, uh, it opens up very heavy on Casey, but the second that April kicks in, it is, it is a tag team um, to the end. So that's so I'm really cool. excited for people to see, see a lot of, of April. Cause I think that's kind of a, it's going to be something fresh. Yeah. And, and, Kaylee does such a phenomenal job. Um, like she, <laughs> she brought many of the crew to tears nearly on set. So, yeah, uh, like, uh, like both like actress, yeah. her 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 acting and also like physicality in the role. Like there are no stunt doubles in this in film. Like every actor did their own stunts. Uh, you know whether you had an action role or you know more talking piece. Mm -hmm. um and sometimes you know like some of some of the stuff in here is like a little out of the wheelhouse i think for some people because you had to like get beaten and some of these people like are just like more dramatic roles so it's there's a lot of fresh stuff that people had to like take a take a crack at and uh kaylee for one with her background did an amazing job with with all of the the physical aspects of fighting and kicking and uh, she has no problem raising her leg over her head to roundhouse somebody. So you'll see some pretty sweet, some sweet stuff in this thing. That's so cool. Yeah, it was, it, it was, and you know, us being together was really meaningful to do that with her and to, uh, to, to, uh, what can I, can I say stuff? Can I say like, you know, to do, to do certain scenes with her was really exciting, you know, um, at both acting and, uh, and just getting to be kick ass. You know see that's that's fun of people listening to this now we're, we're we're kind of building that anticipation where it's like what you're not telling us we're like i wonder what he's not telling us so <laughs> <laughs> awesome i mean yeah and oh and don't pull a tom really, holland okay really, <laughs> I, I get so excited thinking about when we were when we were creating this stuff you know and um you know i remember Chaz came out um uh, i'm not sure when it was but we were we were in the midst of choreography and we had been you know because we had been traveling we've been going in and out with uh, our director of photography and uh kai and myself and then eventually um jacob bates who also plays one of the the bad guys and and just working on choreography and thinking about how we were growing some of this stuff and and what one of the one of the fights were and what it just continually grew into and it and it's exciting. It's exciting and also crazy to think like, oh, thank God, thank God the cookie crumbled like that. Because <laughs> it, you know what I mean? Because it wasn't. There was no like trying to force a square peg in a round hole. It was just like, oh shoot, and then this will happen, and this creates this stake, and then we get to do this. And man, we got we 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 definitely got a little audacious with some things, um, <laughs> and, 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 and luckily we were able to pull it off. But it was it was really awesome. Awesome. I'm excited. I mean, just, just hearing how passionate you guys are talking about this. I'm, I'm so excited. Uh, have you set a release date yet or anything along those lines, or is it still, still too early because it's in post? I think it's a little, it's still a little early. We are definitely far on the back half of it. Um, definitely yeah. sooner than later. I think ideally we'd love uh, early this, this year coming up here. Um I can't say we're at a point where once the film is finished with music, some sound and the rest of the visual effects, um, the merch is pretty much ready to go, which is oh, nice. Cool. So yeah. it's not a matter of we got to get the film done first. Then we got to get the merch done. 
merch is like is ready to go really so we're kind of at this there's point few where things. there's still there are still a few things we're hanging out couple, we, we have a couple, couple things. things still hanging out but yeah but much of much of the merch is is ready to go so um once the film's done a couple other little tiny merch things we're sending off the blu-rays to be made and then once we get those back is when everything's going to really start rolling between the uh the premiere if we can make that happen yeah and um and then getting it out to people that's fantastic so i'm i'm running short on time here so i'm going to have you guys um I, I'd like you to share where people can follow you. We were talking about Chaz's in, Instagram and all that, but um, let, let's get Steven on this too. Adam, um, where do you prefer people follow you guys? Oh, Chromatic Phantom. Uh, yeah, definitely follow the Chromatic Phantom Instagram. Um, you can follow my Instagram, which is stevez883. Um, there's a, a ton of links for it on Chromatic. So, um, and follow Chaz. Yeah, he's I'm just, I'm he just, does fun stuff. Uh, my my Instagram's uh, all over the place. It's a little bit personal. It's a little bit project based. So you'll see a little bit of everything. But mine's just uh, Chaz Chaz Dre D R A Y. And we're welcoming uh, we're welcoming uh, Kaylee and uh, April O'Neil herself. Hey. Hey. Hello. Hi, hi guys. <laughs> we were we were just singing your praises. We don't have much time left, but um, we wanted to involve you. Aww. Stop it. No. Welcome. Uh, I, last time you were in the background while we were recording and you're like, wow, Mark Queso just followed her post. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any questions you want to ask her before we wrap it up? Um, let's see. What was uh, what was something that surprised you about this? Like, was there anything that challenged you about this role? Oh, yeah. Lots. Um, I think what surprised me was honestly for, and I'm not a pessimist. I'm not someone that's like, it's not going to work out. But <laughs> when I heard that we were trying to film in Chicago in February, I definitely was like, mm, I don't know about that one. But for, I think the, the only thing about it that was hard was that it was just cold. Mm -hmm. And despite everything that could have gone wrong, it didn't. We had a, a really incredible team of people around us that were ready to support and ready to work really, really hard to make it happen. Um, so I think that that, and it shouldn't, I shouldn't be surprised by that. I was, I was delighted. There it goes, mm -hmm. I was really, really delighted by that. Um, and I think kind of segueing into what challenged me was seeing how ready everyone was to step on and step like get on board with the the thing um that meant that i had to do that too and that i needed to work just as hard to be not only with <laughs> there goes Bert, be with um my partner who worked his ass off for the entire the entire duration of from start to finish but our our Chaz and Steve and Dom and Phil and all of the people. I mean, we had a kind of a skeleton crew, but that just meant everyone had to, to kind of be a hundred percent all the time um, and on and off screen mm -hmm. being ready and willing to pick up where the pieces fell and, you know, sweep and set dress and mm -hmm. makeup and be there or oh, yeah. get, get hot chocolate or we, co like we'll be warm or have a coat or whatever like steve i remember i handed steve my coat many times while we were filming or as he was just like holding it to warm it up for me and then I, as soon as i would step off you know get off camera he would like be there to like warm just like throw it over me really really quick and then like try to warm me up really really like for a minute or two and then we'd go back in so yeah, there were, there were little things like that when Steve, uh, you know, I, I was, it was the last day of filming. And the last day of filming is actually the first scene of the film when mm -hmm. you watch it. Mm -hmm. And I was so, I, my body was just totally done. I was like so tapped out. And uh, Steve would like come up behind me. He would like do the <laughs> thing where you like rub yeah. your, your arms. You Mr. Know, Miyagi. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was, just, yeah. it was uh, a camaraderie like that. Yeah. It was uh, great. Yeah. Um, any fight stuff that challenged you? Did you love it all? I really loved it all. The all, all the credit goes to Kai. All, all everything goes to Kai. He is an incredible um, 
very like I don't want to say meticulous in like a boring way but he's very like detail oriented and it's nice to work with somebody that understands film in the sense that he understands okay this move will look cool but it also look cool on Mm -hmm. film which I think is sometimes really hard for people transitioning even from theater to film which is my experience and I think Adam's experience is it's hard to see the shots whereas in theater you kind of just do it and the audience claps and it's very very nice thank you so much but like with film you have to think about this angle and that angle and who's taking it and how to time it out right so that your audience doesn't one get bored and two get motion sickness so Mm. Kai was wonderful. Um, having a dance background was was great, but Adam was definitely like, all right, when are you going to hit that punching bag at the gym? Like, what are you doing? We did, we, <laughs> you her gotta, and I did a lot of fight sessions. And I was like, eh, I think eh. she got, I think, I think her getting mad at me helped fuel I was, her fighting. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm fine. I can do it. And I should have done I'm it like, more. You see her punching right now? <laughs> you look like a whip. Okay? Uh, no, but Adam was also really, really helpful. He reached out. He reached out to a lot of other um, fighters that we're familiar with that he was like, okay, so this is what Kaylee's doing. This is the filming. This is what I'm doing. And we would film ourselves and we would send it to other people, other yeah. fight. I, honestly, even like, uh, I know we got to wrap it up. I'm so sorry. but sorry, even, That's like, okay. <laughs> on, on Instagram, <laughs> you know, there's a, a guy named Jack Boone and he's, um, you know, uh, he's, he's a Turtles fan and he also happens to be a fighter. And um, even just him, like, I would send him videos of Kaylee and uh, I said, what, 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 you know, he, he would give feedback and like, what's wrong here? Plant her foot what's, and, what's happening here? Why does this look weird? Cause dance know, and fighting is very, very different. Like don't cross your legs on an arm bar and stuff like that. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, exactly. like, and so. because, and the fighting we had, we had April doing because Chaz, how would you explain like the vision of like, how does Casey fight? How does April fight? Uh, I mean, I think it was always, Casey is very uh he's he's a grappler and striker and he's more of a wrestler and and April was always uh a little bit more like a taekwondo kind of approach it was very kick heavy you know getting some jabs in but you're gonna catch a roundhouse in the face at some point (laughs) yeah so yeah it was uh well I, I I'm so glad you joined us also for everyone listening when you hear her i say that's bert that's our cat bert. that's cat that's- <laughs> yeah. it's okay my cat buddy was on my lap for pretty much the whole interview so <laughs> right, we all have cats it's all right we all have cats yeah we're a cat fan uh, where um where can people find you kaylee <laughs> on instagram Under or, what? or in illinois if you're in illinois <laughs> what's your uh, instagram uh K- it's just my name k-a-l-i-l-i-b-b-y it's not it's not a spelling mistake it's just i just have yeah. to have a lot of l-i's in my yeah. name <laughs> it is it is it looks like callie it's but it's kaylee it's kaylee when i first met her i didn't know what her name was that's okay and um <laughs> it's usually how first dude. meetings work adam so dude well i mean no not like that <laughs> a lot. oh okay i, I know your name kaylee <laughs> yeah, i saw her i saw her on on Instagram and I saw the name I was like okay this girl Callie looks really really like fun and happy and I want to meet her and and then uh and then she had a, another account tag in her thing and I thought it was like her friend I didn't even realize it was her it was like a separate account for her and it was her middle name Malia and then I realized it was her I was like oh wait is her name Malia then? you're getting you're getting a lot of information yeah I know this right is now. all this is all important though <laughs> and then and then the next like couple of days I saw her and then her friend called her Kaylee I was like Kaylee okay it's Kaylee not not Malia because other things that it was like her like actual account and then I went and saw her at work the next day and she had a name tag and the name tag said Libby and I was like what is your name I don't <laughs> you got four names Crazy. it's like a Seinfeld plot that's awesome yeah, honestly, yeah it is <laughs> and uh and 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 um to wrap that up for me you can find me at adamsartbox.com like I Adam own a box of art on Instagram Mm-hmm. That's it. thanks for letting us talk your ear off <laughs> yeah no no problems um thanks everybody for listening to this segment we're going to be right back with the casey jones mini series uh number seven where we talk a little bit about casey and learn a little bit more about him and uh thanks again to uh chromatic phantom for joining us thanks for having, thanks us, for having us yeah thank you for having us thank you to everyone who has supported us 
You mean so much to us, really. Hi, this is Adam, a.k.a. Casey Jones from Casey Jones Livewire, and you're listening to Epic Tales from the Sewers. Time for a knuckle sandwich, punk. Scrubbing pukes. And this is uh, the penalty. <laughs> two minutes for slashing, two minutes for hooking, and lest I forget my personal favorite, two minutes for high stick. <laughs> How about a five minute game misconduct for roughing, pal? Hey, bogey. Now, who died and made you referee? You did your job. Now get out of here and let me do mine. These JV low lowlifes need to be taught a lesson. Not like that, they don't. Not from you. Well, it looks like you're the one who needs to be taught a lesson, pal. Class is pain 101. Your instructor's Casey Jones. Look, I don't want to fight you. Well, tough rocks, pal. A Jose can say go back. Tell me, you didn't pay money for this. Ooh, that's it. Just do one sale, pal. Ugh. Hey, what are you, some sort of punker? Huh? God, I hate punkers. Especially bald ones with green makeup. Who wear masks over ugly faces. Ooh. No better! Strike one! Whoa, <laughs> whiffer! Well, new game, roundhead. Cricket. Cricket? Nobody understands cricket. You gotta know what a crumpet is to understand cricket. I'll teach you. Six months. Slow freak, I got work to do. Freak! Freak! What the heck was that? Looked like sort of a big title in a trench coat. You're gonna look out of here, right? Come back here! I'm not finished with you! Damn! The next issue to cover is the Casey Jones Micro Series. It's IDW Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles number six. This was script by Mike Costa and Ben Epstein, art by Mike Henderson, and colors by Ian Herring. This takes place in between TMNT issues number 12 and 13. We start off with Casey and Raph, who are fighting a bunch of uh, gang members in the alleyway. Casey has a hockey stick and Raph has his size. We get a bit of narration from Casey. Everything was simpler in high school, squad. I call shenanigans. No way you saw it. You scored two goals in eight minutes, says Raph. Casey rebuts with, It's true, man. I tied it up and then we won in overtime. Look up the stats online. Whack. As he whacks one of them right in the face, he falls down to the ground in the alley. Here in college, coach keeps asking why my grades aren't up yet. If I don't get off this academic probation this semester, I'm through with D1 hockey. Casey and Raph continue their squabble. Raph's obviously not believing him. Oh, wait. You can't type with three fingers. Hey, I had him. Sure you did, says Casey. Can you type with five fingers? Says Raph in a rebuttal. It's a good point. You should get busy in the library, Coach tells me. I can't tell him I've been busy, but not in the library. As Raph and Casey finish up in the alleyway, they can see what's going on. Casey picks up a piece of uh, evidence that looks like, Hey, I never said baseball was my sport. Mind calling the cops? My buddy left his phone in his other shell. As he hands a wallet to a woman and a man who are being mugged, we see that Casey and Raph climb up a nearby fire escape into the building. Way you threw back there, I'd say. Your sport is knitting, says Raph. Next time, I'm patrolling with Michelangelo, says Casey back. The man looks at the woman, 
seemingly in disgust uh, as they look onto their new their new saviors. Are you okay? I just got saved by a guy in a hockey mask and a giant talking turtle. Is this what happens when you go south of Canal Street? Says the woman. Casey returns home. He opens his door. He walks in with his gear. And he sees that his father is passed out drunk on the couch. And then, when I was nine, my old man dragged me to a frozen oval parking lot on the coldest day of winter. He strapped an old goalie mask on my face, stuck me out in front of a net, shot pucks at me till my ribs were bruised and my fingers nearly froze off. Said the cold would toughen me up. And then he had a flask of whiskey to keep him warm. Casey looks at his father, who's passed out. He puts a blanket over him and show he still does care about the old man. He did take me for a hot chocolate after. And that mask still comes in handy. Especially on late nights. Casey, just about to get to bed, hears knock, knock, knock on the wall. What's that? His father wakes up. Open up, Artie. It's Blake. Mind if we come in? As we see a man holding his knuckles like he's uh, ready for a fight with two toughs behind him that look like uh, identical twins of Superman. How's everything, uh... How's your boy Casey, right? Uh, he's okay. So, why I'm here, hate this man, uh, you put me in a tough spot. Way I remember it, I got you out of tough spots. You did. A long time ago. But now, you owe me a lot of money. And I am not the one who gets a, who gets beat up anymore. Whoa, 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 just hang on. As these guys look at him like they're about to just take Artie to town, he bends down and opens up a drawer. He pulls out a necklace with a diamond-studded hockey stick. He goes, ah! Casey peers through the door. I'm sorry, but this won't cut it. You still owe four large. This should cover the tab easy. I can give you 48 hours to get the rest, for all time's sake. But don't keep me waiting again. The man leaves with that in his associates. He leaves with the hockey stick necklace. Say hi to that boy for me. Remember, I remember he had a wicked slap shot. We see a flashback to looks like a woman's hand holding that very same necklace. Hey, Ma, you look good today, says Casey. As he looks on his mom, who's very ill in a hospital bed. What do you say we blow out of here for some dinner? She looks over at him. Let me get my coat. How was your game? I scored two goals at the end of regulation. We won in overtime. My strong boy. She looks at him. Your hair is too short, though. Did your father see your score? He, he couldn't make it, Casey says. Flashback to present. Sixteen hours and counting since Blake's visit. I was going to study tonight, really, but that'll have to wait. Come on, you call that offense? Oh, I doubt you double down on you, you busters. Stupid drunk. As Casey's dad throws the remote control and yells at the television as he's watching hockey. No doubt that he's uh, bet on the game to try to win some money back. Hey, look, it's the player voted most likely to bust his head open. Casey in his mask looks up as Raphael in a trench coat comes down on him, ready for patrol. Thanks for coming. Sure. What's up? We're not set to patrol for a week. Not a patrol. More of a stakeout. Yeah, yeah. Well, are we prepping punks, prowlers, pushers, pill poppers? I just want to keep an eye on some guys who need an eye kept on them, all right? <laughs> sure, no problem. Me and Raph are obviously up for the task. Into a bar. Looks like a pool hall, and it's called Scar Bray. In walks a hooded Raphael with Casey w without his mask. I think this place smells. But my buddies, my buddies hang out in the sewers, so if this dive's a good fit for suckers, Blake's can play like this guy and drunks like my old man, or would be if he had a prayer of paying Blake back in time. We see that Blake and his associates are, are working up someone at the bar that looks like he's an easy mark, like he's going to try to make some money off of this guy. Flashback to Casey's mom in the bed again. I know it's not easy. Your father's not strong like you, she says. Whatever. He's a stupid drunk. Casey Arnold Jones. Sorry. Remember, he's losing me just like you are. And he acts tough just because he's scared. You'll need to take care of him when I'm gone. You're going to be fine, Mom. Casey, when I'm gone, you need to take care of him. Back to present day. Promise me. We see that Blake is still working up this guy. Started with such promise, but then after such a disastrous final quarter, we see the guy is looking just really distraught as Blake behind him looks pretty interested in seeing what's going on. Casey, why are we watching this guy watch a game? I've been less bored watching Splinter meditate. Shh, he says to Raphael. I'm sorry, Matthew, but that game did not go your way. Uh, Mr. Andrews, uh, Blake, I I'm good for it, I swear. You know me. 
Senzo, Carlo, let's take a walk. Let's go, Rev. As they look on, ready, as the two tough-looking Superman twins grab some pool sticks and push him out into the alley. I'm sorry, Matthew, but this is no fun for me. It seems like it's a little fun for him. The man gets thrown out head over heels into the alley. Maybe it's a little fun, says Blake. M Mr. Andrews, please, I'll get you the money, I swear. You know, the, the Knicks, this isn't their year. I've got five grand on the Rangers. It, you know, uh, they'll come. You know, just just give me time. As one of the one of the Superman twins decides to swing the pool stick, Raph whoosh, blocks it with a sigh. What the hell? Says the man. An uncoated Raphael and a masked Casey Jones with hockey stick pop out. I've thought about using a pool cue. I just hate the smell of chalk. As they quickly lay into the two toughs, Raph and Casey both knocking them in the face with their respective weapons. And then Raph finishes up with a shoulder throw and then a knee to the midsection of one of the twins. As they chase down Blake, Casey's close behind and hits him in the back of the shoulders with his hockey stick. Matthew's paid up. Sure, 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 got it all paid up, says Blake. You come after him, and a lot worse than this will happen to you. And Arnold Jones is paid up, too. He's off limits. Jones? Jones is off limits, he says to Blake. As he reaches in, and he grabs the hockey necklace. Raph, you good? I'm good. Literally everyone Raph has talked to is just been destroyed on the ground. Gambling's a bad habit. Stop doing it, he says to the guy in the alley. Hey, man, seems like things got pretty intense. Happy to help, but what are we doing here? Casey responds. Keeping a promise. Back to the hospital room where Casey and his mom are there. Strong people don't have to remind people they're strong. They just are. Like you, Casey. Like you too, Ma. Maybe. Meant to come earlier, but I got... held up. <laughs> Casey. Casey's dad reaches over and hugs the mom on the bed and starts to cry. It's all right, Arnie. I'm here. I'm here. We could see that she seriously was his soft side and that he's just absolutely lost without her. Back to present day where Casey's dad is sitting on the couch just drinking a bottle as he sees him. Where the hell are you, mutt? Nowhere. Is that sass coming from you? You got a smart mouth, don't you, you piece of crap? Dad? Let me go to bed. You think you're some tough guy? He says to him, not even understanding that he just saved his life. He reaches out and he smacks Casey a couple of times. We hear a flashback to his mom. Remember, your father isn't strong like you. And part of the way that you have to take care of him is not letting him see that. Promise me you'll let him feel strong. As he just beats the crap out of Casey. And Casey leaves when he's done with it. We see him show up at the second time around. I'm trying to keep my promise, Ma, but I don't know how much longer I can keep this going like. As they come in on the turtles, Casey's a little worse for wear, and then we see the turtles are actually playing playing Twister on the store. Casey, says Raph. What happened? You said you guys didn't get hurt, says Leo. My dad didn't like my <laughs> smart mouth. It's fine, as Mikey helps him to his feet. Dude, Casey, are you okay? Of course I am. I can take it, no problem. I am the strong one as he holds up the diamond hockey stick necklace that he retrieved from Blake for his mom. That's the end of the micro-series issue number six. It's pizza time. And now, in a segment that we call Pizza Time, where we discuss any Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle or pizza-related food, I give you Pizza Time. Hey everyone, on Pizza Time today, we have a special Casey Jones-themed recipe. They're called Casey's Cookies. Casey Jones likes pizza just as much as the turtles do, and he's totally down to prank his family and party guests with these pizza lookalikes. Here, the sugar cookies are topped with olives, black tinted icing, and pepperoni, cinnamon candies, and oregano, green sugar. But you can experiment with whatever pizza inventions you can dream up. Ingredients. Two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. One half teaspoon baking powder. One half teaspoon salt. Two sticks or one cup of unsalted butter at room temperature. Three-fourths cup sugar. One large egg. One teaspoon vanilla extract. The toppings. One pound box confectioner sugar. Two large eggs, egg whites, or five tablespoons of meringue powder. One half cup water. Gel food coloring. Red, yellow, blue, and black. Red cinnamon candies. Green sprinkles or sugar. Instructions. To make the cookies, in a medium bowl, whisk together the flour, baking powder, and salt. In a bowl or an electric mixer fitted with the paddle attachment, beat together the butter and sugar for 3-5 to five minutes until it's light and fluffy. Add the egg and vanilla and beat until it's incorporated. 
Dump in the flour mixture and beat at low speed until everything is combined and the dough comes together. Divide the dough in half. Plop half of the dough onto the sheet with plastic wrap and flatten it into a disc. Then wrap it tightly. Repeat for the other half of the dough. Refrigerate the dough disc for at least one hour or up to three days. Or, if you really like to plan ahead, make the dough and freeze it for up to one month. Then just move it to the fridge the night before you're ready to make the cookies and let it defrost overnight. Arrange the racks in the top bottom thirds of your, op of your oven and preheat to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. On a floured work surface, roll out the dough into 1 fourth inch thickness. Punch out circle shapes using a 3 inch round cookie cutter or the rim of a glass. Reroll any scraps to cut out as many as circles as you can. Place the dough circles on two ungreased baking sheets, spacing them about one inch apart. Bake for 10 to 15 minutes, switching the position of the baking sheets halfway through until the cookies are light brown, or light brown around the edges. Remove the cookies from the oven and let them cool for about five minutes on the baking sheets, then transfer them to the wire racks to cool completely. To make the icing, combine the sugar and egg whites or meringue powder in a bowl with an electric mixer fitted with the paddle attachment. Beat on low speed until combined, and then stream in one-third cup water. Increase the speed to medium and beat until the mixture holds soft peaks when you lift the paddle, about five to eight minutes. If the mixture seems too stiff, add more water, one tablespoon at a time, beating in between additions until it reaches your desired consistency. Set out four ramekins or small bowls, spoon one-fourth cup of icing into one, one-fourth, one-third cup into another, and one-third cup into another, and rest until the last one. Tint the first one black, the second one red, and the third one light brown. Seven drops of red, two drops of yellow, one drop of blue. Leave the last one white, covering the ramekins with plastic wrap while you wait to prevent them from drying. First, spoon little blobs of red icing, sauce, onto each cookie, then spread them evenly on the back of the spoon, leaving about one-eighth to one-fourth inch border around all. Next, scoop the light brown icing into a pastry bag, or resealable plastic bag, with the tip of the bottom corner snipped off, and pipe it around each cookie to make it look like pizza crust. Then, let the sauce in the crust dry. Spoon a little dollop of white icing, cheese, onto each cookie and make it a little, and make it out a little, making sure that you don't cover the red sauce completely. Immediately press a few cinnamon candies, the pepperoni, onto each cookie. When the white icing has dried, scoop the black icing from the pastry bag into the smallest tip, or scoop into a resealable bag and snip off the end in the bottom corner. Pipe a little bit of black olives onto each cookie and finish with a pinch of green sprinkles, your oregano. Let the icing dry completely before serving. That sounds like a completely excellent version of pizza cookies that Casey has. I hope you enjoyed this pizza time, not so much about pizza, but about Casey's favorite cookies. Cowabunga, dudes! Thank you for listening to the Epic Tales from the Sewers podcast. The Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were created by Kevin Eastman and Peter Laird. This podcast has no affiliation with Eastman, Laird, IDW Studios, Nickelodeon Studios, Archie Comics, or any other Turtles properties. This podcast is a member of the Epic Sewers Podcast Network. Be sure to check out our other great shows, some turtle-related, some not. Thanks for listening. Epic Tales from the Sewers is recorded by Justin Cooper. <laughs>one thinks because you're a zombie you don't know good coffee well they're wrong we have very active lifestyles it's not all wandering the countryside aimlessly or scaring passing motorists and we all love a good cup of joe and there's only one brew that gets my seal of approval deadly grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure bold robust delicious it's coffee that can wake the dead <laughs> With over a dozen different roasts and flavors, Deadly Grounds can satisfy the most finicky of coffee addicts. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Hey there, this is JB, 
And if you enjoy Tales from the Crypt, then check out my show, Tales from the Podcast, where myself, and usually a very special guest, sit down to discuss the TV show, the films, the animated series, as well as the original comics. So check me out every other week on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, and of course, at TalesFromThePodcast.com. Thanks for listening, kiddies. You're all a scream. <laughs>